Okay. Th thank you. Uh, I'm glad you did all of the uh, introduction for the uh, UE crew this morning, Doug, because I was going to do it <laughs> anyway, so I don't have to. But uh, you guys sure do deserve a, a good round of applause. First of all, I'd just like to uh, give you a little bit of my background. Uh, I, too, like uh, the Senator Paul Campbell, am a, an Alcoa retiree. And I want you to know that it's a, a reassuring fact to hear other Alcoa uh, employees like Chris Tyndall talk about Alcoa's retirement, or not the retirement program, but the reliability program. <laughs> and <laughs> the reason for that is, is as being a retiree, it's important to me to know that those folks are out there helping to guarantee that my retirement check keeps coming in. <laughs> and about the uh, plant that I worked in, it's actually located in uh, Riverdale, Iowa. And it has a mailbox address of Bettendorf, Iowa. And they call it Davenport Works. And I could never figure that out. But anyway, be that as it may, Moving on here, my principal role in the reliability department or predictive maintenance department at the plant was offline motor circuit testing or analysis. And in doing that job, I really didn't need an ultrasound gun at that time, but I carried one anyway. And the reason I carried it is because I can't stand the smell of natural gas. It just drives me bananas. So whenever I would get a whiff of natural gas, I would go look for it and tag it. And to go a little bit further on in time, I was expected to do online, energized motor testing, which then necessitated more of a need for the ultrasound inspection prior to opening anything energized, and it also, uh, at, at a request of mine from a safety aspect, I was pr uh, given an infrared camera to also scan those things before you know, touching anything that was hot. So with that in mind, as I'm doing my daily uh, testing routines, now please keep in mind this plan is a mile long. So you talk about you know, your piping and your ultrasound leak detection opportunities, and this plant were everywhere. It's got steam line, you got air, compressed air line, and you have natural gas lines with lots of furnaces and lots of piping. So there was plenty of opportunity to find these things. The first one that I've got here, uh, Boy, 2005, that was a good year, wasn't it? This was the uh, first one that I wrote up for uh, this particular presentation. Uh, as you can see, I, I tagged every leak that I found. And that particular tag had a number on it. It was kind of a, a common source tag in the plant that anybody could use. But it was important because they were all numbered. And it was easy to uh, tie that with a work order number. And also with a uh, picture of where it was located. Now you'll notice here we have a bottle of Snoop. Uh, this used to be the old timers method of finding gas leaks. So. I want you to know, and the reason I took this picture is because I have proven to myself that the UE detector will pick that gas leak up long before Snoop will. As a matter of fact, several times I've intentionally tested it. I'll find a leak, I'll put Snoop on it, don't see anything, but come back, you know, five or ten minutes later, and you got all kinds of little bubbles. 
<laughs> and then I also stuck this in here saying that obviously somebody did not believe my report and rallied to get the Snoop leak detector out and verified my ultrasound find as noticed in the prior slide. And I thought the TPM banner was added a nice touch as well. Oops, wrong button. Here's another natural gas line leak. And I was quite a ways away from the source on this one. But this one could even be, you know, once I found it and located it, could be, see it with my hand or feel it with my hand and actually see it because of the oily atmosphere. And that would be that tag right there. The first uh, whiff of this gas that I detected with my nose, I was actually down a floor below it when I first smelled it. So anyway, uh, in, it doesn't take anything to find these things. I mean, the, the UE gun is so directional uh, you can pick them up very, very quickly and easily. Okay, the next one, I was pretty sure that this union was leaking. And I shot it from several different angles to you know, help ensure that that's where it was. But uh, with that DP orifice there, I didn't know if the flow of that was giving me that reading or not. So that's why I did all sorts of different angle shooting at it. But again, it was tagged and turned in on a work order. Then after they completed it, you'll notice that that piping is all gone. And the reason it's all gone is because they weren't using that anymore. It was an old DP cell that they hadn't used for 10 years located a floor below. So that was a, a good uh, move on the behalf of the maintenance department. <laughs> this is the, uh, the biggie. This one I was uh, very, very much upset with because I was up on the first floor, in other words, about 20 feet above ground level, and this valve up just underneath the roof was leaking badly, big time leak. Now you see that I didn't tag it. I didn't tag it because I couldn't get to it. These voltage lines, and that was like about a four foot square, prevented anybody from sticking a ladder up there as well to check it. So what they had to do to even get to it was build uh, two scaffolds, one on either side of the uh, power lines and then put two by 12s across the top of that. And the uh, unique thing about this one is the engineer on the uh, crew that repaired it called me and asked me if I could pinpoint that leak a little better. So I went back out and shot it again. And I said, well, it appears to be the seal on the cap. And that's exactly where it was. That's from 15 feet away. That's pretty darn accurate. I, w I even impressed myself on that one. <laughs> OK. Ultrasound to the roof rescue. This is my own personal unit that I still have yet today, the old standby, the old analog airborne ultrasound gun, and the tone generator. Never used the tone generator at work because I never had a need for it. But one afternoon or evening, the wife and I were all dressed up, ready to go away. And I came down out of the bedroom and she says to me, Honey, come here, please. 
Why is water dripping from the kitchen ceiling fan? I reply, I don't know. I'm going to put a bucket under it, and we went on our way because it wasn't a big problem. Yeah, I got that one fixed in a hurry, didn't I? <laughs> and as you can see from this shot, uh, I then took measurements, you know, to get a rough idea of where this was located up in the attic. And I got to thinking about this. We've only lived there a short time, actually. And the first thing we had done to the home was to replace the roof. And I'm thinking, come on, what is this? So it was time for another trip up to the attic. And I had just gotten done insulating this attic. You know, it's like 50 feet from the access hole back to where this leak is. So I go up there. And uh, I could see where the water had been drip running down this roof joist and dripping off at about where that fan was located. Well, right away I see, well, there's a vent pipe over here. That's a suspect. And, whoops, wrong button again. I go up to the roof. This is the, uh, well, that's the vent pipe there. And I see we can patch this here and around that vent pipe, thinking that that's where the leak must be, surely. Next time it rains, well, there's another picture of the same thing. Uh, see, I tarred it up pretty good, guessing, you know, where it was. And after several rainstorms and not being able to uh, actually locate the leak because after every storm I'd go up and check that bucket that I put under the leak you know to contain it and uh, there'd still be water in there and then like it says there finally duh tone generator time right so okay up to the attic with the tone generator and uh, out on the roof with the 2000 <laughs> couldn't find anything except where I expected it through the ridge vent. I could hear it, so I knew it was working. And I scanned and scanned and scanned out there and couldn't find anything until I stuck the gun down into that pipe. And it just about blew the phones off my head because it was so loud. Then going back to the attic, <coughs> and along with the help of a good uh, flash picture, then I could see that it appeared to me like this whole area had been wet in through here. Yep, you guessed it. There's a reason for that cap being on there. The hole that was creating the leak is located just under the flashing, in between the flashing and the wood. And it was leaking out onto that and across the uh, uh, roof about two feet down that roof rafter to the light located there. Amazing. Any questions or comments? Jim, how much you charge to come out and do that? I got that same problem right <laughs> What kind of attic do you have? <laughs> no crawl space, Jim. No crawl space. Yes, sir. Jim, when you, when you put the uh, instrument down the vent pipe, it got, got a loud noise. Was it the tone generator that generated that noise? Oh, yes. You betcha. Where did you place the tone generator? In the attic. Actually, it would have been located uh, probably eight feet away from that pipe. Doesn't really make any difference where, right? No. Mm -mm. 
Oh, one other comment I'd like to throw in here. Go ahead. Put the slide back. Is it here? Yeah. Oh, okay. While we were uh, vacationing, I believe it was last summer, up at Lake Paw Paw in Michigan, that's where my wife's son's new uh, lakefront home is located, uh, they pulled the inflatable raft out of the water because it was leaking. Guess who found the leaks? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, I'm going to take a break. <laughs>